Continuing on with the series, I have not put up the top notch walleye yet, so that uh, that is indeed what I'm about to do. Uh, I've played in this one several times. Unfortunately, this hasn't been on for a while uh, when I'm on, so I just wanted to make sure I put that up on the channel. Uh, the key notes on kind of on this thing here is make sure that you have a stringer in your inventory. Rod sand usage during a competition is prohibited. Only fish caught from the shore will score. Boat use during a competition is allowed, so if you wanted to use it as transportation, you could. Again, it's your best three. The winner is determined by the total weight of the three largest walleyes on the stringer at the end of a competition. Not a keep net. Make sure you have a stringer. Um, rewards, again, uh, X-Series larva would be one that a guy would want that might not be able to get any other way. So, again, only the top three will pay. So, pretty self-explanatory. But basically, just the best three walleye. I'll kind of show you a basic idea of what I do, um, what works, what may not work. Again, you can never uh, anticipate what the uh, bite rate will be. I will be using this medium spoon. I will be trying some uh, jig heads and worms as well. The worms are really popular. Uh, again, I don't claim to be the best at this one. This one can uh, be kind of difficult like the Xander, but not quite as bad. Uh, I think the most I ever got was two uniques. I can never, for whatever reason, get three uniques. Uh, and it's also possible you could play in this and only get trophies in common. So, uh, you know, you just kind of want to prepare yourself for that. It's happened to me before. Like I said, I've got two uniques and I've got it a couple times where I only got a couple trophies and a uh, common. So it can be difficult, but I will put up markers, the basic idea, again, like I do on all of them. But again, on your inventory, make sure that uh, you do have... Um, but you do have a stringer and not a keep net. Alright, the first spawn point I'm going to is the uh, Vanishing Rock. Right here. Again, it is on the cloudy peak. If you need these stand marks, uh, here's my stand mark. Here's the first spot I'm going to cast to. Caught it off a worm and a spoon. No guarantees. Uh, again, in this thing, I'll, st I'll start with a worm and I'll try cycling through several different lures. The tough part is these things are on the bottom, as you can see. Somebody's already got three, uh, looks like two, three unique up there. So uh, this one is definitely a difficult one. But again, I wanted to post all of them up on my channel. Just so you kind of got a basic idea. The, thing, the hard part about this is uh, they kind of like a lift and drop. Or they want something near the bottom. Especially in this spot right here. But most people are probably using a worm and or a spoon. Now I do, knowing me, I do got another lure that I can catch them on. Uh, as well as you're going to get collateral damage, your main uh, interference fish is going to be smallmouth bass. Uh, depending on your spawn point. But on this spawn point in particular, uh, you're going to be wading through bass. Now if you, oop, I had a nice one miss it there. Now if you're struggling to get it with that and you have difficult time controlling it, uh, another, again, uh, key thing that I might use is this spoon here. Even though it seems like it's really big, again, you're trying to target the three biggest walleye that you can. And any guys tuning in, welcome to the stream. Again, kind of the same thing. You're going to want that thing near the bottom. And the comp was only 30 minutes long, so you kind of just want to there's two or three spots I'll show you. Two out of the three I've got the uniques before. The third spot over on that beach, I've never been able to get that unique there, at least in the uh, the comp. So, again, I just uh, missed a nice one. So this is another option that you can use. Stop and go or twitch or lift and drop there near the bottom is where you're going to have to be. Uh, 
Um, I'll show you another option here in a second. So what I'll do is cycle through it. Now, again, if you guys playing this for the first time and you seem to only catch commons and trophies, sometimes that's just what's going to happen to you. And then this one here you guys are familiar with. I love using deep runners. Uh, now, since this thing is 26 feet deep, I'm not going to have any trouble uh, sticking this thing to the bottom. And again, it's a 6-0. So 4 to 6-0. Uh, you could probably go 3-0, but maybe your walleye end up a little small or something. I am going to try to use a deep runner. I doubt anybody's using this lure. This, again, is kind of a tricky retrieve. And that's the trouble with the walleye. If anybody's ever fished here for the walleyes, you know, they're all at the bottom. Nothing exciting. I'm just uh, trying to put up the uh, top-notch walleye. How you doing, Deedle? I'm hoping to catch at least a couple while I here. This one's a pretty difficult one, but uh, I hadn't put this one up on my channel yet. Again, you're going to mess with smallmouth bass as well. This might be a walleye. Don't know how big though. Okay, we are on the board. Yes, bro. Bargy, use the hell out of that deep runner. I, if Fish and Planet would ever give me an X-Series deep runner, I'd be tearing shark up. I'd be tearing so many fish up with that thing. Yes, Bergy, the, the unique will even bite these. If you have that 30 foot, uh, 33 foot 6-0, stick it to the bottom, Berg, and then just let it sit there. Same thing I do with sharks. If you ever watch my shark videos, I catch trophy shark on the 8-0 deep runner. You can use the 4-0 if you're not comfortable with it, but... They will work. No guarantees that uh, I'm going to get anything because the computer hates me. But Try to keep it to the bottom and let it float up. But yeah, I would try it. Practice it first if you haven't already went into the comp, Bergie. See how that just, I just missed a nice one there. You just want to try to keep it to the bottom and barely let it float up. Sometimes they'll hit it when it's just sticking there. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, that jig head either. It's just, I think this is just a little easier of a, uh, easier of a hook set. Now the smallmouth bass will hit this as well. But I think we did get a uh, walleye again, maybe, I can't tell. Might be a bass. No, it's a bass. But that six seventh uh, spoon I had does work as well. But again, if you guys notice on the wall, I mean, you have to be at that bottom really to get that unique. But yeah, I would love to have the uh, the X series deep runner. And they will hit the 4-0 as well, guys. Uh, again, I'm trying, hoping for a little bigger of a fish, so I've been trying to stick with the 6-0. It's also possible I'll end up in Common City or Trophy Town, so, but I promise they will. The Unique will hit this. It's going to depend on your RNG. And yes, the smallmouth bass love it as well.
And obviously, if you had the X Series one, you got a little more beef on it, so. They're over there. Trust me, he's over there. The bass are too, either way you go. And for whatever reason, the RNG never helps me anymore. But uh, hold on, I'll show you the marker, Berg. It's a long cast. Make sure you got a. Uh... Hold on here. But yeah, anybody watching back on this kind of walk along tutorial, uh, a lot of people are going to be using the spoon, but you need a 6 to get a bigger one. Also, the 5 inch uh, worms will work, or the 6 inch purple worm. On a 6 jig head, 3 jig head, 4 whatever you can control and keep to the bottom. But yeah, I usually have a little better luck here than I do, do over there, Berg. But again, I, I played this, I want to say, four or five times. It just, this one hadn't been up yet to uh, put it up since I started my channel. But this lure will work. Uh, again, you never know what your luck's going to be. Time-wise, you know, you only got 30 minutes. So normally you only want to spend about 12 minutes per spot, but... Since this spot's active, I'm going to stick this out. Yeah, I've got it off the concrete dock. The same thing happened to me, Berg. I can never get that thing off the beach. And of course, since I'm doing this walk along, I'm not even going to get anything fun. I'll try a couple more casts with this, guys. But I just wanted to give them a general idea. But you're going to want to fish it off. You guys have to be at the bottom. Anybody that's played in this uh, will know that. But if you have not played in this... Stupid bass, come on. Since I've been over here 12 minutes and this spot's giving you fits, if something like that happens, and now you can, a key note, you can cast, I'll, I'll make one cast, just in case. You guys can, can cast at this buoy. I'll go ahead and make one attempt at it. But I usually have better luck on that left side on that marker that I showed you. But the same thing, you're going to want to be towards the bottom. Because this is so deep. But either way, you're going to be slaying bass. And an occasional trout or salmon if you're really lucky like me okay guys and then the second spot everybody probably knows this they like the buoys uh, again a lot of my marks are gonna be off worms but I'm just showing you kind of a different way to uh, do this um, well I got markers over here somewhere did I erase every marker I had I may not even kept the marker out here let me see Okay, well, it's possible I don't have the marker. 
I'll see if I can pick him up anyway, but normally just right here out there by that marker. We'll see if I can pick him up. And I wouldn't cast too far to the left marker because actually the catfish love these things too. And you are fishing off the bottom. Now this might be a walleye. I'm hoping it's not a catfish, but it should be a walleye. And it looks like it might be a trophy. If it's a catfish, everybody can just laugh at me. There's a nice nine pounder. Uh, again, if uh, you guys needed a mark, I had marks over here a long time ago, but I've been thinning my marks out because I'm kind of bottomed out on them almost. I got, yeah, I am almost bottomed out on them. So I'm, I'll set that for you guys and then I'm going to erase it because I don't really need it. Now that we caught the one, you guys can see that that hit that very aggressively too. So uh, again, if you guys want to use a spoon, use a worm. That's a key note as well. It's just the, the, the retrieve on that's a little tricky. And I seem to miss more fish with that than I would this deep runner. Uh, now again, the advanced tips for any of you guys that have that, I would definitely be trying your 33 foot uh, 6. So as you can see, I got smashed again. And the good part about that is you're not missing as many fish as you would on a, on a jig head. And that's why I've been trying so hard in some of them comps because I would love to have that deep runner. The X series, beefy, beefy, beefy. So we'll see. Uh, should be a trophy. Another nice trophy. Again, since you've caught two trophies, I might as well keep casting. But what I can help you with is I can never get the third uni. And uh, obviously my first spot was kind of slow. So uh, the spot off the beach, I'll kind of show you if I can get to it. Again, I'm running out of time as I walk through this. But yeah, definitely give your deep runners a try. One of the uh, most uh, unused lure in the game for some reason. I don't know why. And I have had the uni follow this all the way to the dock. Uh, one good thing about this one over here is even though you can pick up some smallmouth bass here and there, I haven't caught a drum off of this thing yet. I don't know if you guys experienced playing in that before over here and caught a unique freshwater drum with uh, one of the worms. But again, as you can see, salmon and bass will hit it. But the wall, I do like it. Now, again, since it's just a generic one, uh, it wouldn't be as good as the X series. Basically, guys, I'm just doing a stop and go. But I'm kind of just doing a reel and float at the same time. But since they like it so close to the bottom, most of the time I don't let it get up too high. Obviously I've missed. You can tell just kind of how to weigh a wall I'll fight. It'll just be dead weight. So I've missed with a bass again, I think. Bass or a trout, maybe. Or is it a wall? Nope, trout. Trout will hit it as well.
as you can see what I did there to get that to hit I let it rise up off there so I'm doing a reel and float I think it's just another common walleye yeah bro watch my uh I, I catch the hell out of sharks too I think oh, it's just another bass but yeah the unique walleye will hit this but again if you guys any of you guys are lucky enough to have the uh that x series the x series deep runner um, let, let me reel in something and I'll show you guys again. Hold on a second. And again, any of you guys watching this back, if you love using the worms, just make sure that you keep it near the bottom. Uh, you'll have a lot better luck. No matter what uh, you guys are playing this game, you'll find that you're going to get, you just get those things dealt to you too, where you're going to catch nothing but bass. It'll happen with the, uh, with the worms and the spoons as well. So anybody that's playing this kind of got the idea there, but. I just want to show you guys a different way, give you a few marks, give you a, a basic foundation. But uh, Fork and Bergy and everybody else, uh, same thing on sharks. I put my shark videos up before, but uh, whenever you go to the map, let's see. Let's see if they show it on this one or not. They may not. Well, my game will quit lagging. Okay, it doesn't show it on this one, but most of the time, if you ever see, uh, let me see if I can find something here. Okay, let's say the uh, the tiger muskie, for example, they'll they'll hit this too. The key note down there below jerk baits is minnows. That's what minnows means for shark, any of it. Uh, Nile perch will hit this thing. So if it says minnows on it, that's what this is. In real life, I fish with these. Uh, we call them rapalas. Just depending on the depth. So if I'm fishing for a bass or something, let's say it's 12 foot deep, I might get a 15 foot runner or a Rapala because I'm wanting to bounce it off of stumps and bounce it off the bottom of the water and just letting it. So I'm doing a reel and float. It might just be the way you guys are using that thing. Now you can just reel it straight. Uh, if you're not comfortable with doing the, the kind of the reel and float, you can throw it out there as well, but you got to be prepared to set the hook. I'd rather hold my rod up. That way I'm not missing as many. So in other words, follow along with what I'm saying is you can reel this down let off of it and just be ready to thump it. You can keep your rod tip down and see how it just sticks to the bottom. Yeah, that's what the minnow is. Uh, I don't professionally, but I do catch big fish professionally. I work in the golf course industry, man, but I do love fishing. But yeah, in real life and farm ponds and lakes and stuff, uh, that's what you're wanting to do. Uh, you know, reel and float. See how that's sticking? Now, if you use the current, like at the Amazon, uh, you know, obviously the current's going to keep it down at the bottom better and help you catch them. But yeah, like I said, I'm just giving you an alternative to use uh, if, if you wasn't having any luck. But again, I've played in this thing with a worm before and just get nothing but trophies as well. So I'm just giving you guys different options. But as you can see how I caught that. In other words, if you're if you're more comfortable just keeping your rod tip down and being ready to set the hook, there's nothing wrong with it. Just know when you lift off of it. Sometimes it'll just hit it just sitting there. Same thing with the, the bull shark at the uh, the Amazon. Same thing with the uh, the perch on the Deep Runner Ados. That's what they put them in the game. I just think people, you can catch them just sitting here reeling like this. But for me, uh, it's just like a shad falling or a jig head falling. You're doing the opposite. You want, you want the, the rising action. Uh, to give the entice the bite. That's why when you look on it, if it says if the buoyancy says floating, it's the floating action that gets them. If it says a, a runner is a sinking action, that means it's weighted. It's going to be the falling action that gives you the, that will entice the bite for you. As you can see, that thing's just stuck to the bottom. Gradually let it float up, and then sometimes that's what will entice the bite. But just so I don't get clumsy and miss a bite, I'll just keep my thing up almost like you would a sky twitch. But I'm just reeling and floating or stop and go with the auto retrieve uh, feature on the game.
It just takes patience to use it. A lot of patience with a shark, but I, I've caught a 440 pound shark with the uh, the 80 deep runner, the red one, or the orange one. I might be colorblind. They do work okay on catfish as well, just not not as good as like you know the the uh, traditional crankbaits. Oh, that's all right, Fork. Just keep casting. I mainly fish for bass, catfish, and crappie in real life. Just because that's what's available in my area. Gabe's just being cruel to me again. And after this one, guys, I'm ending the stream just so this saves on the thing so I give people some marks. I guess I can run over to the beach real quick. I'll show you guys another spot, but I can tell you now, uh, I don't know what it is over there. And again, whatever the computer's dialed me up is what I get. So uh, when you come over here, you guys probably know this area, and it's a heck of a walk, but uh, they're, they're all through here as well. Uh, a lot of times they're by the buoy. Uh, you know, they're over here along with the trout and stuff. Uh, they're also all along. Let me see if I got. I just never have luck in that spot over here, but I want to say somewhere over here. That's not as there walleye out here. Walleye's out there as well. Uh, like I said, a lot of people's go to will be the worm. Oh, yeah, I've never fly fish fork. Uh, that'd be f something fun to learn, though. We do got a small lake here in town that they uh, they stock uh, with rainbows uh, every October. They dump, I think, six, 8,000 of them in there, but they're gone by probably May. But I've always thought about one of these winters, I'm going to grab a uh, fly rod and just try to practice. And again, sometimes, guys, you're just going to be dealt with the blocker fish, so there's nothing you can do there. But since I've showed you that, I'm going to go back over that first spot and see if I can at least pick a, another trophy up to save my dignity. Yeah, I bet the, uh, yeah, I bet it would take a lot of patience, man. But yeah, kind of in closing, guys, anybody that watches this back, there's nothing wrong with casting out there because you can get them. Uh, but this spot here for me, I usually like better. It usually don't let me down like it did right now, but again, you can try the green one as well. The 4 uh, if you want to go with a little smaller hook, but again, if I do get my uniques, I'm hoping they're in that 16 to 18 pound range. Uh, cause if you get a 13, 14 pounder, uh, you're not really going to put a big run up. So you'd want to say, you know, you would think a little bigger of the hook will give you a little bigger of a fish. And as you can see, the CPU dialed me up the Trophy Town card. So, but at least I got some fish. I showed you guys a different way of uh, different way of thinking and another lure at least to rotate to. If you're confident, more confident with your worm, or your worm's having trouble, uh, it's definitely something you guys should give a try. After the stream, I'm going to put up another stream. I'll be grinding comps again all day, but a lot of them are the ones I played in, but I will keep a stream up and going. Oh, that was the big one. Damn it. He thumped it and missed it. 
I usually don't. But I will be playing in the Moonlight Gar and the, I think I got a bass. I will be playing in the Moonlight Gar and the other ones today as well. But I wanted to save this on a, on a channel. Yeah, Trophy Town is better than getting skunked. I will agree that. But definitely better than uh, Skunkville, Josh. So, and again, uh, just to, let's see if I can get a bite real quick. But, you know, look, look, definitely I always keep a lot of these in my tackle box. This one here will actually tear up the Uni Asp. Uh, I put that up on my channel the other day when I was flashing. The Uni Ass will actually smash this as well. Um, that's the Arrows Deep that you get from the Fourth of July five dollar pack. Uh, they will bite the uh, they will bite this one here too. But again, I, I keep these for shark. Uh, this here is 77 bait coins. Key note for you advanced players: do not spend 77 bait coins on that. Uh, I've tried that out on shark and various things. This one here, for whatever reason, unless I haven't found a fish to catch in the game. Uh, this one here is not worth your 77 bait coins. Uh, out of the two, I think they prefer the orange color. And again, key note, uh, that's a floating. Uh, down here, I keep this to catch small Nile perch and the Nile emperor. If you guys seen that video, the difference is if it says buoyancy and sinking, that means it's a, uh, a reel and drop. So the enticing action is going to be at sinking instead of floating. So reel and float and then reel and drop or reel and sink. Just got, in other words, that's just going to sit on the bottom, but it's great for the Nile perch if you want to catch a 35 to 40 pounder uh, in that Nile Emperor. And just for fun, just for fun. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Are you at the game? How's uh, how's your boy doing there? I'll throw on this big one for fun to see. I'll make sure I don't snap my rod in half. How heavy is that thing? Two ounces? I'll be all right. It's only a quarter over. Maybe the walleye wants the 8-0. Also, one key note, if you'd had a rod that could have cast a little farther, I probably should have put that on. I didn't quite reach the range. That could have been part of my problem over here as well. Probably should have put that on a different rod. But I like the little Loki. Yeah, I think it's going to be too big. I just hit a, had a big hit there, but. And again, nothing wrong with trying your guys' medium spoons and that sort of thing. But like I said, it's just such a tricky retrieving to keep them there on the bottom. Just another option to give you a, here for the uh, top notch walleye. But you guys did see I did get three nice trophies with it. Uh, and again, that can happen to you even with your, uh, your worms, guys. So. They got beat now waiting on our main team, bro. 17-30 KO mixing. Okay. All right. Well, that's over. That does conclude. Uh, again, anybody watching this back, I'll... Uh, oh, wow. Let's see. I'll put up those marks one more time just in case somebody fast forward to me talking like a nonsense. But again, you guys can catch them there. Uh, and then here's the uh, stand marker again. And then make sure you can kind of reach this point, I would say. That's kind of where I probably made an error. My Loki wasn't casting far enough. So you could probably use your salmon monster or whatever you can to, to, to hum it out there a little farther. 
and then that, that's another generic lure that will pick up the, uh, the the walleye as well and then over here I think I showed the marker saying go and race it so the concrete dock and then over here I just haven't had much success but they are over here as well so uh, again this concludes the top notch walleye I'm going to look at the schedule here I just wanted to say this on my channel um, to help you guys out we do have quite a few nice ones in a row so I'm going to put up another grind of comps here. Hope you guys stop by and say hi. Um, we're going to be applying for the saltwater giants. That's usually a fun one. And then uh, we'll go down through here. And I have to, I actually have to put this up on my channel at some point. Might as well put it up later. So I'm going to do a nice marathon on these three here shortly. But uh, give me 15, 20 minutes. I want to get a drink and uh, communicate with a few people. So you guys take care. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, John, sorry to hear you lost, but at least they made it to the semifinals or whatever. So nothing to nothing to keep his head down up about. Keep his chin up. Keep going. See you guys later.